Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play the entirety of the video and then I'll go back and talk about things that are going on to better explain what's going on and talk about things that I think that were done right and or done wrong. Without further ado, here we go. Hello, my name is Rick Armendariz and I'm the Deputy Chief for the Anaheim Police Department. This critical incident community briefing is intended to provide you with information about a non-fatal officer-involved shooting that occurred on Friday, November 13th, 2020. This incident involved an Anaheim police officer, however, it occurred in the city of Buena Park. You are about to see relevant video footage and photographs, as well as hear audio recordings and learn of other relevant evidence so that you have a better understanding of what occurred. An officer-involved shooting is a tragic event for everyone for our officers, for our community, and for the family members of those involved. These incidents demand the highest level of scrutiny and rightfully are a matter of public concern. The Anaheim Police Department conducts exhaustive investigations following any officer-involved shooting. This investigation related to this incident is still ongoing and could take up to one year to complete. With that in mind, we withhold judgment and do not draw any conclusions about whether or not our officers acted within our policies and in accordance with the law until after all the facts are known and the investigations are complete. A word of caution. The images and footage you're about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. I'm Sergeant Jacob Gallagher with the Anaheim Police Department Professional Standards Section. I'm going to provide you with a brief overview of a non-fatal officer-involved shooting that occurred on Friday, November 13th, 2020. On that date at approximately 4.15 p.m., the Anaheim Police Department Communication Center received a 911 call from a concerned motorist who indicated a male had pointed a gun at him in the area of Lincoln Avenue and Western Avenue. It was communicated that after the weapon had been brandished, the suspect began following the caller eastbound on Lincoln Avenue toward Beach Boulevard. When the vehicles reached Beach Boulevard, the suspect vehicle was observed pulling into a 7-Eleven parking lot. Here is a portion of the call made to our communications center. 911, what's your emergency? Do we need police with a paramedic? It's going to park with a transfer. He said he saw a guy with a gun in the vehicle advising he's in Anaheim. Sir, okay, thank you. What, what street did this happen on? Uh, this guy is still following me. He's on Lincoln. Uh, I'm on Lincoln on Western. It's on a great Toyota. It's an old, old Chinese guy. He's showing me a gun and taking pictures of my punches because I honk him. I him because he was on the phone and I was waiting behind him on the light. Okay. So what street? Up. Hold on, please. What street are you actually driving on? Uh, right now I'm going towards Beach on Lincoln. I'm crossing Western right now. So he's back. following you? Yeah, he's following me. I already give a turn all the way in Matt. Okay. And what I'm kind of Toyota is he in? Yeah, okay, do you have the license plate? Uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Five. of of case. I can understand you. Five. Five. Um, let, let, let me get them really clear. Okay, what color make and model car are you in? I'm in a black for Fiesta. A black what, I'm sorry? Black Ford Fiesta. Ford Fusion? Ford Fiesta. Ford Fiesta. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make a... Let me see. I'm going to make a right on beach. What I want you to do is continue on to Lincoln. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct you to the police station if he's following you. Can you continue straight on to Lincoln? He, he, he left. He used to follow me. Okay, so he's not no longer following you now? No, nah, he got behind the 7-Eleven. So he pulled into the 7-Eleven? Yeah. At what intersection? Uh, in front of the Walmart right there on Lincoln and Beach. Based upon the information provided, this was made a priority call for service and officers were immediately dispatched. The following is a portion of the police radio traffic at the time it was dispatched. 
213, 1 out of 23, 417, Lincoln and Western. To mail in a gray Toyota, show the RP of 417, they're eastbound Lincoln and following the RP now. Now 23 from uh, Euclid and Lincoln. 214 no prior to that from Orange and Beach. 214 10 it's a correction, RP's in a black Ford Fiesta, and it's a gray Toyota Camry. Two eleven clear sworn, show me in 111 Adam, nine seven on the last. Adam, 23, you can send 22. Lincoln and Bill are saying what? The vehicle is last seen pulling into the 7-Eleven at Beach and Lincoln. Adam 1497. Adam 1497. 7 Green 2. Confirming Green 2. Copy Green 2. And from the 417, the RP is going to be standing by at Twilight Reef Park. 211, there's a subject running in front of Walmart right now. Male Hispanic shaved head, black jacket with white stripes down the sleeves. Looks like uh, black shorts. He's in front of the shoes fitness. If we can get someone to stop him, he's running from the 711. The first officer arrived on scene within one minute and observed a male running from the 7-Eleven parking lot across Lincoln Avenue and into a Walmart parking lot. Based upon his observations, the officer believed the male was involved in the weapons brandishing call and began directing other officers to pursue the male. As the male continued to run, the officer lost sight of him. Officers deployed to the area and began establishing a containment area in hopes of locating the male. As this was occurring, witnesses provided information that the male had jumped a fence into a nearby residential neighborhood. As officers continued to establish a containment area, an officer recognized the actions of the male to be similar to that of the male pictured here, Raul Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez fled from the Buena Park Police Department during the previous week, and Buena Park PD detectives disseminated a flyer indicating Mr. Sanchez had an active felony warrant for $100,000 for residential burglary. The flyer further indicated handguns had been taken in one of the burglaries and that Mr. Sanchez should be considered armed and dangerous. And it was likely that he would run if officers attempted to contact him. Here is a portion of that police radio traffic. Information for units over here on the uh, Beach and Lincoln call. Gwena Park chased a uh, burglar, uh, it would be last Wednesday. Um, and he used this same route to escape heading towards Laxor. So this guy just did it today in reverse. The guy's name is Raul Sanchez. The officer who initially observed the male running looked at the wanted flyer and positively identified the subject that ran as Raul Sanchez. Okay, I've been actually looking from looking at the uh, my APD bulletin that Raul Sanchez is the subject I saw. For the next several minutes, APD officers and the Buena Park Police Department Communications Center received information that a male was running throughout a residential neighborhood on Adams Way in the city of Buena Park. I have a resident coming out, Adams, saying that somebody ran into their house. Stand by. Angel, we have an RPN. Adams advising a male's in her garage after jumping her fence. At 4.36 p.m., Anaheim Police Department Air Support Officers, Angel, located Mr. Sanchez jumping fences and running through backyards in the 7800 block of Adams Way in the city of Buena Park. After running for a short time, Mr. Sanchez stopped and hid in a backyard. The following footage, taken by Angel, depicts Mr. Sanchez's actions. I've got him. He's running. And uh, he's jumping the wall into, uh, hang on, I'll get you an address. It's showing, but it's the south part of Adams. East or west of, of that red Mustang. 
east of. He's running back westbound. He's uh, two houses west of the east end of Adams on the north side of the south Adams area. Hey, guys, keep your perimeter response. Is that Angel, the second house from the horseshoe? All right, three, he's now jumped westbound, and he's three houses uh, west of the street. The people that, at that house just came out of the front, and I've lost him under some trees. Jimmy, is that between the blue two-story house and the one next to it, or west of? He's, I think he's in the backyard of the blue two-story house with solar panels on it. But everybody hold your perimeter, because there's a lot of trees here, and we're going to need to get uh, an arrest team. But somebody needs to grab these people and pull them out of their house, because there's kids running up to the garage and stuff. Copy that. We got off of the blue house. Everyone maintain your perimeter. Jimmy, can you start an announcement for the neighborhood, stay in your houses kind of thing? I can't, because we're up at uh, 4,500 feet. Copy. And this mail has, does have active 1032 for 459. Copy that. We're all going to stand put here for a minute. Let's see if uh, Angel picks up on him again. Sure. It's officer safety for Buena Park, uh, one of the Resbergs involved with theft of guns. Yeah. One ten two for info. Positive ID on the subject is running in the backyard. It's the same guy at 211 call. Mr. Sanchez remained in the backyard for approximately 15 minutes, at which time he emerged from a group of trees and forcibly entered a residence by climbing through a window. In response, officers ensured the residents of the house had been evacuated and established a containment area around the house. The following footage captured by Angel depicts Mr. Sanchez's actions. Okay, give me the air for a second. I got used to climbing into the house from the west side. So he's definitely inside this house now, the blue house with the, uh, the solar panels. I'd like to get a smaller perimeter around this if we could. Copy that. Hey, just confirm the residents of that house are all out. 1031. Copy. They're all out. For the next 45 minutes, Mr. Sanchez remained inside the residence and refused all commands to exit. Announcements were made using Angel's loudspeaker, even calling Mr. Sanchez by name, asking him to surrender. However, he refused. At 5.37 p.m., Mr. Sanchez fled from the residence he was hiding in and ran westbound. He once again began jumping fences and jumped into a backyard of a residence where two officers were on a containment position. Mr. Sanchez was given commands to make his hands visible and an officer involved shooting occurred. The following footage taken from Angel depicts the officer involved shooting. Angel, he's running westbound with the, with the two little dogs, running westbound directly to the react team. He's right, he's right in the yard north of you, running westbound, running westbound. The units, he's coming over the fence, the two units in the backyard, you're going to have contact with him now. Okay, he's, they're making contact at two houses west of the primary. 271-998. Stand by. Copy, 998, confirms. One. We got one down. Yeah, FedEx uh, stage. We'll call them in when we need them. All cops are good right now. Working on taking them into custody. All Anaheim Police Patrol officers are equipped with body worn cameras. Per Anaheim Police Department policy, all body worn cameras must be worn in a forward facing position that facilitates comprehensive recordings of contacts and or incidents. You are about to view body worn camera footage from that perspective. It is important to keep in mind that body-worn cameras are an investigative tool, and like any device, they have limitations. 
Body-worn cameras do not necessarily capture everything an officer sees, just like a body-worn camera may capture something an officer does not see. Further, body-worn cameras do not have the ability to depict what an officer is feeling or experiencing during a given incident. The following body-worn camera footage is from the primary officer. <laughs> Show me your hands! 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 Roll over! Roll over. Let me see your hands! Roll, Roll over to your side! Hey! Show me your hands! Friendly! 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 Don't come up! Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Crawl this way! Hey, good? Me. Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Don't move! Don't move! Let me see your hands! Your hands. hands above your head! Call towards me, dude! You don't crawl towards me, you're gonna be bit by a police dog, dude! Let me see your hands, dude! Crawl towards me! Yes, you can. Crawl towards me. Crawl towards me. We can we can go past the exit if you want to move. Yeah, push left. Yeah, the guys move left. Move left. I see just two hands on top of his head, guys. Before, when he jumped over, he was reaching for his waistband. Let's do it. Let's do it. Don't move, or you're gonna be bit. You understand me? Who are my shoes? Yep. Both of you guys? The following body worn camera footage is from the secondary officer. He's running westbound with the, with the two little dogs. Running westbound directly to the. We have teammates right, he's right in the yard north of you. Running westbound. Running westbound. The units, he's coming over the fence with the two units. Show me your hands! Use your hands! Show me your hands! Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Roll over! Let me see your hands! Roll over to your side! Roll over to your side! Friendly, friendly, friendly! 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 Friendly
The third is an internal administrative investigation conducted by our internal affairs and major incident review teams. This investigation examines any areas where improvements can be made and determines whether the actions of the involved officers were within policy and consistent with our training. If you would like more information about the Anaheim Police Department's use of force policy, please visit us at www.anaheim.net forward slash police. Thank you for taking the time to view this critical incident community briefing. All right, let's get into it. So this guy actually didn't end up having anything to do with the original call, but because he's a shithead criminal, um, they ended up coming across him and he ran and um, went, jumped into different yards and got into people's houses and stuff. Uh, lucky, very lucky he didn't get blasted by um, the people who whose house he went into. But he takes off for, for a pretty good little run. It's showing but it's, And when you think about Adam. home security, so it wasn't too long ago that uh, there was a pursuit in my town and sheriff's office had pursued a guy they disengaged the pursuit actually they had initially started to follow him and because of their goofy no pursuit policies decided to terminate the pursuit well dummy thought that they were still following him and continued to drive like a bat out of hell and eventually wrecked well he gets out and gets on foot and then goes in the house of this person a woman there was two women in the house and I think they were like baking a cake or they were doing something in the kitchen and dude broke in on them came in through the I want to say he came in through the either the garage that was open and came into that door or just came in through a back or side door where they were at and uh, made entry into that house so something like this where someone is jumping fences going through your backyard stuff like that that brings up the topic of home security. How many of you keep your doors unlocked right after you get home? How many of you lock your doors right after getting home? How many of you keep your garage door open or halfway open and the door that leads from your garage to your house, how many keep that door absolutely locked? Those are things that you need to think about. So if, you, if you're the type to keep your garage open, well, you need to for sure keep that side door um, or that door leading from the garage to the house locked. Side doors, whatever door it is that you most commonly use to get into your house, you need to get in the habit of always locking that door behind you. There are some nice electronic locks that you can get that when you get home, you type in your code or you use your key, whatever. You open the door and you close it. And then that door automatically locks again. So you don't have to even think about locking it. If you're especially living in an urban environment, you need to make sure that you are locking your doors when you get home. And on top of that, this now also brings into the question of guns in the home. So this guy is jumping fences and stuff like that. What if uh, someone in your neighborhood is running from the police and you forgot to lock your, your front door or you forgot to lock your back door or side door or your garage was open and you left that little door open or unlocked? What if someone came in your most commonly used door right now? What would you do? Where, where is your gun? Is the door that the person comes in between you and the bedroom where you keep the gun? Is your gun all the way upstairs in the bedroom? Those are questions you need to ask yourself. And then, once you've asked yourself that, and whatever the answer may be, you need to work around that. 
you need to solve problems. If your gun is not on you, then it might as well be in China, realistically. If someone's able to come in your door right now, can you act? If you got to go to your bedroom, your gun's not on you. It's nowhere near you. It might as well be out in the car at that point. Because someone can come in, close the distance very quickly before you're able to ever get up and go to the bedroom and then get your gun. East or west of, of that red Mustang? East of. He's running back westbound. He's uh, two houses west of the east end of Adams on the north. This is a pretty nice um, thermal imaging camera. North side of the South Adams area. Hey guys, keep your perimeter response. Is that Angel, the second house from the horseshoe? <laughs> Is that Angel, the second house from the horseshoe? So it looks like he fell. I Is hope that, that hurt. Angel, the second house from the horseshoe? Now keep in mind, he's right there. There's people right here. Alright, three, he's now jumped westbound and he's three houses uh, west of the street. The people that at that house just came out of the front and I've lost him under some trees. These people got a lot of um, solar panels on their house. Just <laughs> random observation. What's interesting is this pool, as you can see the steps, so that tells me this pool's empty because you can't see through water with thermal. A lot of people that have pools that are empty. Alright, so here he is. Give me the air for a second. I got used to climbing into the house from the west side. So he's definitely... He is super lucky there was not anybody in that house to blast him in the face. Definitely inside this house now. The blue house with the, uh, the solar panels. I'd like to get a smaller perimeter around this if we could. Copy that. Hey, just confirm the residents of that house are all out. Sanchez residents were to his flat jumping fence shooting shooting. Angel, he's running westbound. There's a guy on the roof. Angel, he's running westbound with the with the two little dogs running west. And the little dogs, <laughs> the little dogs are chasing him. <laughs> Sound directly That's to the funny. React team. He's right. He's right in the yard north of you. Running west. You always count on the little tiny dogs to be the most fiercest. <laughs> no, running west now. Hey, units. He's so keep in mind, he's running right here. There's officers over here, and then boom, there's these officers right there. I mean, basically just waiting for him. Coming over the fence, the two units in the backyard. You're going to have contact with him now. Okay, he's, they're making contact at two houses west of the primary. I'll back that up. Okay. As soon as he comes over, this is the guy that's going to shoot. He's, they're make, so he's pop pop. Making contact at two houses west of the primary. 271998. And of course, everybody else is running up to back up. Yeah, I'm right. 
copy 998 confirms. So you see where he had been laying. Thermal, uh, thermal imaging is actually pretty cool. Um, I went through a, uh, um, a law enforcement thermographer course several years back. Um, wrote a grant through Homeland Security and we got awarded the thermal camera plus the training that came with the camera. And um, thermal cameras are, they're really neat. They do some pretty cool stuff. And, you know, you can see uh, where people have been laying at. Um, you can see false walls. You can see um, clandestine graves. So like where someone's dug a hole in the ground and then filled it back up. You can see the difference in the soil through that away. Um, hidden compartments inside vehicles, stuff like that. They're very cool tools. Um, and you can just kind of see where he had kind of initially been laying at. And then when he rolled over, you could still see the, the thermal impression on the ground. Now, of course, this kind of thermal camera they're utilizing is a, it's a cooled camera. Um, there's a cooling device to keep the, um, uh, the device cool so that it has sharper images and everything. And the, the zoom ability on it is, is freaking amazing. The handheld unit we had, it could still zoom, but, um, I mean, it, it kind of pixelated. Usually your, your aerial units are far, far, far more sophisticated We got one. We got one down. Yeah, the FedEx uh, stage. We'll call them in when we need them. Lockups are good right now. Working on taking them into custody. All Anaheim policy, all of recording that per pool, the captain does not put an body. Run and watch out. Run and watch out. The units is coming over the fence. Show me your hands! Hey! Go! He's hands! Show me your hands! So as soon as he came over this fence, started running. Uh, he reached into his waistband, and this officer, fearing for his life and the life of the other officer, he decided to fire. I have absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, this guy is a known violent offender, armed, considered to be armed and dangerous. Uh, he has, one, um, entered a dwelling with people in it, and he is continuously running from the police, causing this big, huge... Uh, ordeal and when he comes over this fence he's reaching into his waistband I believe that officer um, acted appropriately he was in I believe in fear for his life this guy was reaching for a gun and he responded Use your hands! Show me your hands! hands. Roll over! Let me Obviously this guy doesn't want to do anything else he's um he's um Learned his lesson, I guess you could say. Raise your hands, roll over to your side. Hey, show me your hands. So people yelling friendly as they're approaching, you know, that's always a good practice, especially in high stress, um, dynamic situations like this. You just don't want to roll up on some someone's rear unannounced and then startle them and um, get some type of unwanted startle reflex. So it's always good to, as you're making your approach, you know there's friendlies in front of you, always yell friendly. A little fur missile. He's wanting to play. Um, personally, I think he should have got some play time. The following body worn camera. Hey, let's do it. Okay. Left, left. Okay. All right, so this guy, I think, is the one right here. Pay attention, there's nothing on the ground. Come on. Here we go. 
and then boom, a flashlight hits the ground. I see just two hands so I think that it's possible that at this point he was using a handheld flashlight as they were navigating around. Now they get to the point where he needs to go hands on, both hands on to the gun and probably has a weapon mounted light. And he just discards the handheld light because he doesn't need it trying to get a two handed grip. Um, I see nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's quicker to jettison something out of your hand than to try to take the time to put it back in a little pouch. Uh, usually, you know, the, the, so the diameter of the body light is, you know, matching up with a pouch of some sort. So you have to take that extra effort to, to guide it in there. And it's a whole lot quicker to drop it than to guide that thing into a pouch. So I see no problem with him dumping that like that. And he ends up recovering it here in a little bit. So he holsters up. It's still there. And then he gets it back up. So, good on that. The following body work. Raise your hand. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I was slightly wrong about that. So, <laughs> tell me how, how you notice things when you rewatch them. So, pay attention to this weapon light right here. Yep. Yeah, move left, move left. Was able to play with handcuffs. Come on. Come on. What are we doing? <laughs> Damn thing falls off the gun. <laughs> move left, move left. Was able to play with handcuffs. Come on. Come on. What are we doing? I see just two hands on top of his head, guys. Before. Wow. What a. What a. Show that he is not the case. The catastrophic equipment failure, like. Holy shit. So he got this. Uh, I'm thinking this might be. I don't know. I don't know what brand it is. But um, he goes. It looks like he goes to press the, the light button. Yeah, we got move left, left, move left. Was able to play with handcuffs. What are we doing? Falls off the gun. Damn it. Um, so I guess I was wrong just a little while ago about what I thought was going on. Um, it looks like he has an equipment failure. The light falls off the gun. So, um, the topic for that, <laughs> um, check your equipment. Um, you know, you got things that, you know, got screws that need to be, you know, set in place. Check those screws. Make sure they're tight. They're not loose. If you need a Loctite stuff, Loctite stuff. Damn, that, that sucks. Like, imagine... If this guy was in the middle of a gunfight and he goes to um, use his weapon mounted light and the damn thing falls off, like holy fuck! Um, and so that now that brings up another topic too: carrying a backup white light. Um, if you have a weapon mounted light, you should always have a backup white light in the event that you have a failure with your weapon mounted light. Now, typically failures with weapon-mounted lights are the batteries go dead or the lens breaks. Um, <laughs> the third possibility of a weapon light failure is the damn light falling off the gun. So, um, you know, always check your equipment. Make sure that shit's locked in tight. Um, and if you're carrying a weapon-mounted light, always make sure you have a backup uh, white light in the event of a weapon light failure. I see just two hands on top of his head, guys. 
Before, when he jumped over, he was reaching for his waistband. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Don't move or you're going to be bit. You understand me? Go over my shoes. Yeah. Both of you guys? No, no, I didn't shoot. After including the use of a tourniquet, bandages, and the application of a chest seal, Orange County Fire Authority paramedic kit bandage immediately began rendering medical aid to Mr. Sanchez, including the use of a tourniquet, bandages. Medical gear, um, you should always carry medical gear on you. If you're going to carry the tools to induce trauma, you should carry the tools to reduce trauma. If you carry a gun for a living, whether you're paid to carry that gun or you just make it the life choice to carry a gun every single day, then you should recognize the fact that there's a possibility that you could be involved in a gunfight. Gunfight means bullet goes both ways. You could be hit with a bullet, teammate could be hit with a bullet, your family could be hit with a bullet. You need to carry medical gear on you. It should always be on you. Um, not every piece of medical gear has to be on you. I'm not expecting someone to carry a bag valve mask in their back pocket. Totally unrealistic, but you can at least carry a tourniquet on you at bare minimum. Extreme hemorrhaging from your extremities is a leading cause of death. If you hit a femoral artery, you can bleed out in 90 seconds or less. <coughs> Excuse me. One more. <coughs> Sorry. You can bleed out in 90 seconds or less from a femoral hip. I don't know of any ambulance service that can respond to and start delivering pre-hospital medical care within 90 seconds. I just don't think that exists. Even at special events like a circus or something or a rodeo where there's an ambulance staged, um, you know, even then it can take a minute or even two for them to get there to that person and they're staged there at the event. So, um, in this line of work, obviously, you know, the medics aren't always following around and, and always there. So you have to carry the medical gear on you. Now, what if this guy did in fact have a gun and he decided to get into a gunfight and one of the officers goes down, that is reason enough to carry medical gear on you. It's not so much that the main reason is to treat the people that you may have to shoot it is to treat yourself or your co-workers. So your first line medical gear, the stuff that you carry on you, um, can be done very easily. You can carry first line medical gear in a medical ankle holster. If you already carry an ankle gun as a backup gun, there's really no reason why you can't carry medical gear in an ankle holster on the opposite ankle. If your uniform um, has cargo pockets. Again, you can easily stuff a little small IFAC kit into the cargo pants. If your company or your agency allows outer vests and there's no stipulations on what you put on your outer vest, you can just kind of put stuff where you want it. There's really no reason then at all why you shouldn't have medical gear on you. If you can put all these other, you know, little patches and gadgets and whiz -dos, whatever on your vest, then you should definitely be able to put a medical pouch on your vest somewhere and have a, a decent IFAC on there. Your second line medical gear is going to be your supp supplemental medical gear that you would keep in your vehicle. Your first line medical gear needs to be on you. That way it could be used right then and there. Your supplemental medical gear, your second line gear, it just needs to be able to supplement what you've already done. It does not need to be your go-to medical gear. If you are still keeping some form of medical gear in your car and you don't keep anything on you, then you're wrong. You need to unscrew yourself and um, start carrying some kind of medical gear on you. If all you carry is a tourniquet, then so be it. All you carry is a tourniquet. At least you're carrying something, then nothing at all. The equipment is one thing, the knowledge is the second thing, and I would implore people to seek out that knowledge. Um, you know, we all, we all say that YouTube is not the place to go to get training, 
but uh, YouTube can be the catalyst to get you on that road to, to get the right training um, or to seek out certain bits of knowledge. Um, those who work the road, um, I'm sure that on top of being able to get free stuff from the fire truck or the ambulance that you come into contact with most often, I'm pretty sure that uh, when things are not going on, you can maybe get some one-on-one -on -one kind of advice and training from the paramedic on how to um, utilize certain pieces of gear. At, at bare minimum, most companies and agencies provide their officers with CPR, AED, first aid training. So at least there's that. Some places may not. Um, and even for the places that do, the places do, that do not, um, more or less for police agencies, you should still be able to um, link up with maybe a medic or a firefighter who's trained in EMT stuff to, to learn a little bit more about this kind of stuff. And it could be free. Uh, you might not get any official continuation training hours or anything like that, but um, at least you could be getting the knowledge on how to save a teammate's life or save your own life. And of course, there's the, the private uh, entity, the commercial training, um, going somewhere to take a full-blown medical class. And even then, taking a full-blown medical class from some private company may not even give you any continuation um continuing education hours to be able to count towards um, your, you know, your annual training or anything like that. If, so what if it doesn't? At least you got the knowledge on how to save your life and save the life of someone else. That's about it. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.